This is Chelsea Marks for VECT 222, TOPS 13, which is a vaginal cytology. So we have our patient here, and she is actually under anesthesia right now, finishing up from a procedure earlier. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you our tray of supplies, which is saline, um, the cotton tip applicators here, and two slides. So we're going to go ahead and moisten those cotton tip applicators and introduce them into um, our patient here. She's just going to spread lips here and kind of have to go more there we are you don't want to be just in inside you want to be in the vestibule here so we're getting our epithelial cells here okay and then we're taking our slide and rolling in single passes you probably fit three there okay so we have three passes there on our slide and we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to go stain it over at our wet sink, um, and we'll be back to do that in just a minute. This is Chelsea Marks for VATT 222, task 13, and we're going to go ahead and stain our vaginal smear here. You can see that it's been rolled nicely across the um, surface of the slide there. So I'm going to put on my glasses, and I'm wearing my um, lab coat here and some gloves. I'm going to go ahead and open up all of the stains. I'm going to use this diff quick triple stain here. So um, it's been air drying. Uh, you don't want to heat fix this. So this has been drying um, for sufficient time. So we're going to go ahead and um, insert it into the fixative 10 times. Okay. I'm letting excess drain off into each jar as we go in between. And then 10 times in the eosin. Stain number two. And then letting that drain off as well. And then a third stain here, the dark blue, 10 times in that as well for about one second each. And then letting that excess drip off. And go over to the sink here and rinse it a little bit. Allow that slide to dry um, butt end down here on the sink just for a little while and then we'll go over to our microscope and we will evaluate what sort of cells we see and go over what sort of cells we would see during um, the estrus cycle in a dog. The slide here has been drying, uh, drip drying here and it looks pretty dry now so we're going to go ahead and start to evaluate it. So we're going to put it on the microscope starting at the 4x Zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So we're just going to take a look here, um, see what kind of cells we're getting. I'm going to take those off for right now so I can see in here. Okay, so on the 4x, what you're doing is just getting it um, focused in and then you're going to move to the 10x. Okay. Um, so I'm starting to see um, a little bit of bacteria, a few red blood cells, um, and mostly, say mostly paramasal. Um, so I'm going to show you an example here um, of a parabasal cell. So that would be this top one here, and, and it's a mixture of small, intermediate, and uh, parabasal cells that I'm seeing right now. Um, so we'll go over the stages of what cells you're going to see um, during estrus, but this is what I'm seeing right now. So these are um, round with um, oval. Some of them have a large, uh, the parabasal cells have a large nucleus. Um, the small intermediate um, have more irregular borders and they have um, a smaller uh, nucleus. They're a little bit larger than the parabasal cells as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep looking here up to the 40x. Okay, so again, mostly parabasal with um, the nucleus here. The large nucleus, um, they're round and they have a large um, nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. I'm seeing those right now. 
I see them really, really close up. So I'm not seeing any cornified cells right now. You know, I'm just kind of scanning across. There's a mixture of a little bit of bacteria. Very few red blood cells. Immersion oil to our slide. Just a little drop. Slide onto that 100x, which is your oil immersion view. so we don't run the 40x over that oil because that's really bad for that 40x. Take your slide away. Turn off the microscope and clean the area for the next person. And we're going to go over um, these cells that I was just talking about here and kind of evaluate in this patient's case where we think she is in the estrous cycle. So um, again, parabasal cells, round or oval, and they have a really large nucleus and a large nucleus to cytoplasm ratio. Small intermediate cells here, um, slightly larger than the parabasal, a little more irregular borders. Um, same thing um, with the large intermediate, they're just larger cells. And then a superficial cell here, largest cell we can see, irregular, um, and they're also known as cornified. So um, cornified cells here represent estrus show you that cycle here. So um, we have the four cycles, anestrus, proestrus, estrus, and diestrus. So um, here during estrus, two or months or more, we're going to see parabasal round um, cells with small nucleus, uh, large nucleus and small amounts of cytoplasm. And here we have um, the start of your proestrus where you're going to see um, the bleeding. You're going to see bacteria and our, uh, red blood cells mix in. Um, with a mixed um, population of um, parabasal and intermediate cells here in early estrus, and then intermediate and superficial cells at the end of uh, proestrus here. So heading into estrus, you're going to see 80% superficial cells, um, all cornified or mostly cornified, and very pycnotic, so either anucleic, um, they have no nucleus, or um, very, very small uh, nucleus. So that would be estrus, which is your fertile period here. Um, where you can get pregnant. Um, marking estrus is the 80% superficial cornified cells and um, no parabasal cells during estrus. Then you move into diestrus where you have the progesterone surge and you're going to have the reappearance of the parabasal cells um, and intermediate cells. So um, that's how it cycles. And those are the types of cells that you would see during estrus. And for our patient today, um, we're seeing mostly parabasal cells, um, these, these type here. So I'm going to place her in um, the anestrus.